Hello students, we are back with another lesson on research methodology. This is almost the end of this chapter. We will look at uh, secondary data. We are looking at the syllabus of Cambridge O Level Sociology 2251, where it states what type of information and data do, do sociologists use, the difference between primary and secondary data, the uses strengths and limitations and value of each type of data. You should first understand what are primary sources of data and then we look at the secondary sources. The primary data are data that the researchers gather themselves using diverse methods of data collection such as questionnaires, interview, observation and so on all these methods of data collection which we considered in the earlier lessons. Secondary sources of data. We just saw that primary sources of data are data which are collected by the researchers themselves. On the other hand, they are also data which already exist out there. So secondary sources of data, they are data that already exist, gathered by other researchers or agencies which are available as published studies often. For instance, all the statistical information available through the census data. Secondary data, like primary data, can be both quantitative, that is in the form of figures, graphs, charts, or qualitative, that is written down in words, such as historical sources. We'll be looking at each one of them separately and the uses, advantages and limitations of each type of these data. Let's now look at some of the examples of secondary sources of data. The census data, for instance, which we already spoke about in a previous lesson, a count of the whole of the population of a country that takes place every 10 years. It provides information on the number of people who were in a particular country in the night of 30th June of that year. It is usually carried out every 10 years. 1901, 1911, the last one was in 2011 and the next one will be in 2021. This type of data involves a huge cost that only the government can undertake. It gives an idea of the number of people by age, sex, occupation, those attending schools, work, their income, information on housing, and a lot of other information. In fact, they come in a number of volumes. Census data help the government to plan that for the next 10 years in terms of jobs, employment, health, housing, education and everything else that the government intend to engage in. Another form of uh, secondary data is the official statistics. Governments in all countries hold statistical information. This information comes from diverse sources, government departments, courts, police stations, diverse ministries, and are centralized in one place. In Mauritius, it is the Central Statistical Office, commonly known as the CSO. You may access the CSO in the website statsmauritius.govmu.org. In UK, it is the HMSO. In your book, sometimes you will see source HMSO. It means Her Majesty's Statistical Office. And uh, you might be happy to know or surprised to know that it was established in as far back as 1786. What are the advantages of official statistics? Data usually are difficult to gather by individual researchers, but official statistics 
uh, data which are easily and freely available through the internet. Earlier they used to be published and put at the disposal of public at a very low cost as hard copies. Now everything is available very freely as open source on government websites and in many other places. So we have the data gathered by the government, uh, well planned and collected with large samples that are representative. And that what makes the value of Shea statistics. We spoke of census as uh, part of these of Shea statistics earlier. The government also publishes midterm data which are published after five years of the census so as to update on the trends or changes that might have occurred within the previous five years. There are other advantages of uh, official statistics. For instance, some of the data are gathered over a long period and therefore provide longitudinal data that help to identify trends. It is not easy for sociologists or researchers on their own to gather such extensive data unless gathered and stored by the government. Let us now look at some of the limitations of official statistics. Official statistics are often criticized by interpretivists. You remember that interpretivists are those who prefer more qualitative data and therefore it is obvious that they might not agree with the way in which official statistics are gathered or used. For instance, interpretive sociologists argue that official statistics are often a result of the interpretation of some people, like doctors, judges, police, and therefore they may not be acceptable by all. What does that mean? For instance, if there is a case of death, very often it is the doctor who decides whether it is an accident, whether it is a crime, whether it is a suicide and sometimes the doctor may be wrong. In the same way, judges, the police may also be wrong at times in the way in which they interpret an event. But that gets recorded in the statistics and some of the interpretation may be wrong and therefore the statistics also may be misleading at times. There are other limitations of official statistics. For instance, official statistics are not presented as per the categories necessary for the sociologist and therefore uh, some of the statistics have to be reworked and reorganized by a sociologist who wants it to be presented differently. Let me give you an example of Durkheim who had to retabulate around 44,000 cases of suicide as they were not presented as per his requirements. We are not saying that there is something wrong with the figures but we are saying that the way they are presented sometimes may not be easy for the sociologist to use straight away. One form of official statistics which is usually criticized is the official statistics on crime. For instance, Crime statistics may not represent the real rate of crime. Why? Because many crimes are not reported or sometimes wrongly reported and obviously they will be wrongly recorded. Some people may also be falsely accused and they would appear in the official statistics. So all these are problems with official statistics that sometimes influence the studies of the sociologist. 
There are other limitations of official statistics. For example, statistics may sometimes be biased to reflect the government in a positive light. In fact, this is often a criticism waged against government statistics by the opposition party. Criticisms of official statistics also come from the Marxist, those who oppose the capitalist system which usually prevail in most countries today. Marxists, for instance, believe that official statistics are used to present the capitalist in a positive light and should therefore be used with caution. It is also argued that statistics rely on people's responses which may be misleading. For example, unemployment statistics may not be properly represented some people may claim to be unemployed while they are in fact working as they are seeking a better job for instance. In most countries unemployment statistics are often misleading. Some people claim to be unemployed to obtain benefits or they are in search of better jobs. So all these make official statistics doubtful at times. You should also be aware of what are non-official statistics. Non-official statistics are statistics gathered by private organizations, non-governmental organizations, sometimes religious groups and so on. These statistics present the needs and expectations of the organizations. While non-official statistics provide information that may not be available from official sources, they may not necessarily present the whole picture of the situation. And that's why they may only be partial about certain specific organizations compared to official statistics which are more thorough and complete. Let us now look at another form of secondary sources which is very popular, historical sources. Historical sources are information about the past available from books, letters, diaries, biographies, autobiographies, government documents and so on. Some of these sources may be classified documents that is, documents which are kept secret for some time and made available after around 30 years usually. But depending on the government and the law, such as the Official Secrets Act of the country, that prescribes when a document could be made public. Historical documents are usually kept in government archives or sometimes in museums and libraries. Other forms of documents include photographs, slides, videos, digital materials as well, diaries of people during the war, which provide information in the absence of written documents. Historical sources are information about the past, which is vital to understand the present. Sociologists often rely on historical sources for the understanding of uh, the past and the present as well. One important uh, source of information, example that you might find in your book, is that of Peter Laslett, who showed through historical data that the nuclear family existed in agricultural societies as far back as 1564. He showed that it is not true to state that industrialization which created nuclear families. In fact, nuclear family existed long before industrialization. You will learn this when you look at family. Obviously, historical sources have got certain importance and strength. 
They offer first-hand accounts of the past. They provide data missing in official sources. They have high validity as they represent real information of the past. What might be the problems with historical data? Historical data may be wrongly recorded. They can also be wrongly interpreted. Other readers do not have an idea of the context in which they were produced. They may be non-representative. For example, a diary is a personal document of one person and therefore it doesn't represent the view of many people of that period. They should be checked for authenticity. As today with technology, people may fabricate fa fake documents. For example, Hitler's diary has often had a lot of fake versions. They may be biased and reflect the emotional state of the author. People may not have a clear memory of the past while they are writing. Often, historians themselves disagree on interpretation of past events. Therefore, historical sources are not universally accepted or interpreted in the same manner by all. Let us now look at another form of secondary data, live documents. Sometimes there are no documents about a period, so that sociologists have to rely on live documents. Live documents are documents written by people about themselves. In some contexts, it is difficult to keep records. For instance, during the war, when everything was disrupted. Sociologists rely on live documents. One of the famous live documents used to write about the war was that of Thomas and Zanetsky, who used letters of a Polish peasant about the First World War. The research was published at the Polish peasants in Europe and America. It is considered a classic work in immigration history. They also used newspaper articles, reports of social workers, courts data in their study. Another source of secondary data is the mass media. Mass media refers to any means of communication to a large mass of people at the same time. You will recall that we spoke about content analysis where we made reference to mass media documents being used for analysis by sociologists. Some problems of such secondary data from the media reside in the fact that they represent the views of only a few people very often, the powerful or some pressure groups. That's why we should be careful about such source of information. The media is often also criticized for being selective, depending on what would attract attention. Furthermore, resources on the internet should be used very carefully because anybody can write anything and it is difficult to check their authenticity. Therefore, sociologists should ensure that secondary data are representative of the event or problem that they are researching and they should be careful about the use of secondary data from the mass media. We looked at secondary sources and also at the way in which we use them and some of the problems that we have with secondary sources. But secondary sources are useful to researchers and sociologists. So we should also be aware of what are the uses of secondary data for the sociologist. Obviously secondary data are very useful. 
they save a lot of time and money for the sociologist. Sociologists cannot gather all the information themselves and have to rely on secondary sources. Any researchers should know what research has already been carried out and how to proceed with the research because they would not like to reproduce what has already been done. So every research starts with a review of secondary data, that is, what already exists on topic under study. We call that literature review, and therefore secondary data becomes very important. Nevertheless, we should also be cautious on the use of second resources. The researcher should always ask the question, who produced it, their ideology, and to which group do they belong? Because he should be careful of the bias that some people who produce the data might hold. You should also be aware of how different social groups are represented in the second resources. Sometimes there might be a lack of representation of the lower social groups. You should also be able to verify what is available in one document from other documents of similar nature. Understand to what extent the author was trying to arouse a particular sentiment. So all these make it quite difficult or sometimes make the sociologist rather cautious of how he's going to use second resources. You should be aware of how second resources are useful and how the sociologist should be careful while using second resources especially when you get questions of 15 marks we are asked to assess the use of such materials. We have now reached the end of this lesson on secondary sources. We looked at differences between primary and secondary sources. What are secondary sources? Different types of secondary sources, official statistics, non-official statistics, historical sources, live documents, mass media documents. We also looked at the advantages and limitations of each one of them and the use sociologists should make of secondary sources. Let's now look at some of the questions you might get on these topics. What is a secondary source? Two marks. Differentiate between primary and secondary sources. Six marks. What are official statistics? Or it could be what are non-official statistics? Two marks. Give two benefits and two limitations of official statistics. Eight marks. What are life documents? Two marks. What are the benefits of using live documents? Six marks. What are historical documents? Two marks. Give two examples of historical documents. Four marks. Why do sociologists use historical documents? Why should sociologists be cautious of mass media documents? Ten marks. Assess the view that historical documents may have several limitations, yet they are important for sociologists. 15 marks. Assess the view that secondary sources are less important than primary sources. 15 marks. And assess the view that official statistics have more benefits than limitations. 15 marks. We have arrived at the end of our presentation. I would wish to remind you that the pictures on this presentation were from open source upslash.com, freemages.com and pexels.com. We'll come with another lesson very soon. Until then, it's goodbye.